Next up, it is the man that is Nick Gosling, Chief Strategy Officer Vital Energy, and he's going to tell us how to get your carbon decarbonisation project off the ground. Thank you, sir. Do I need to go here? <clears throat> Are you using okay. the laptop? Oh, it's here? Yes, yeah, Okay, there. you can check that. Let's do that. Yeah. Great. Good morning, everyone. Really delighted to be here. As you heard, I'm Nick Gosling from Vital Energy. And today, I'm going to tell you about how we approach decarbonising buildings and estates, and how to go about getting your decarbonisation project delivered. And subject to time, I'd like to share with you a few case studies of where we've done it before. Uh, I don't know if we have time for questions in the 10 minutes, but I'm sure we will afterwards. So let's, let's get going. So as a business, Vital Energy can work across a whole range of activities from a blank sheet of paper on the left-hand side, working up uh, an outline technical concept, taking that through into a business case evaluation, into full design, into delivery, and then long-term operation and asset management. So... We, we are able to provide a full end-to-end -end solution and work with customers in elements of that if you don't need a full end-to-end -end solution. There are four main things that you need to think about in decarbonizing heat. And this is from left to right as you're looking at the screen. The first is the type of fuel or input energy that you're using. That is then converted through a, a piece of equipment into a different form of energy, for example, heat, cooling, electricity, losing efficiency as it goes. So the, the drop to the yellow bar is a loss of efficiency. That's then distributed around uh, what could be a heat network or a building, again, losing efficiency, until it gets to the end point where it's actually being used to heat, cool, etc. To decarbonize, we generally work from the right hand backwards. So we look where we can at reducing consumption. So the best form of energy, um, energy conservation is not using it in the first place. So if we can help customers to reduce consumption, that um, generates a significant benefit all the way back through that value chain. The next thing we look at is ways of reusing uh, energy, improving control, using forms of renewable sources, which could be solar or wind power, using forms of waste energy, waste heat. And that allows you then to make a significant reduction in your carbon emissions. And by doing so, you're then on the journey to net zero, which I should say is, is a journey. It's not a final destination. We, we all have um, the ambition to get to the right-hand side, the net, the net zero, but it will be done in a series of steps. So we need a plan, and it will be um, a process of understanding technical options, the evaluation of the business case, getting approval of the business case, implementing the project, measuring and verifying the outcome, but then doing it again with another technology, another solution. And over time, that sequence will, will get us to net zero. Meanwhile, there's a whole range of external factors like policy change, uh, changes in energy prices that we have to navigate through. But, you know, as long as you're taking positive steps to reduce consumption, improve renewable generation, then you're on the journey. So some key steps to think about. Step one, call vital energy. Step two, undertake the initial evaluation with our support and with partners uh, like um, the other speakers that you'll, you'll hear from today. Develop an outline business case. And if you're a local authority, you'll have to undertake some sort of uh, tender process or undertake some sort of um, use frameworks. There's a whole load of uh, public sector compliant procurement frameworks that could be considered things like the Lexica framework, the CCS framework, Fusion 21, uh, the Carbon and Energy Fund framework, et cetera. Um, once you've then selected your partner, get into delivery and then measure and verify the outcome. It sounds very simple, but each step of the journey has its own challenges and, and we're here, as are others, to, to help you on that process. So here's a few examples. I haven't just picked Scottish examples, but I could, I could e equally be showing 
uh, Dundee City Council, where we've undertaken a lot of energy conservation projects. This project was for Westminster City Council, where we undertook um, surveys under the refit framework uh, of 70 council buildings. I've undertaken a range of energy consumption reduction projects, including lighting, heating controls, ventilation controls, building management systems upgrades. We've installed solar PV, air source heat pumps. And the combination of those things has made a very significant change in carbon emissions for the council, over 1,700 tonnes of carbon per year. And that process will, will continue looking at further uh, opportunities across their wider estate. The next example I'll share is the Queen's Quay project, which is a, um, a large-scale water source heat pump that uses low-grade energy from the River Clyde, boosts that up using heat pumps, and distributes that to um, homes and commercial buildings in the former John Brown shipyard in Clyde Bank in, in Glasgow. Again, significant carbon uh, reductions <coughs> from this, and this is exactly the type of technology that we'll need in a net zero future, using um, zero carbon electricity coming from the grid and converting that into zero carbon heat in the future. Next example is one where we're using a waste heat source. So this is in Leeds, where we've connected a heat network to an energy from waste facility, and we've piped the, uh, the, the, the heat into the city centre, connecting to around 2,000 residential properties, uh, Leeds City Council, uh, civic buildings, and the network over the last about seven years has been the fastest growing city scale heat network in the UK and continues to grow and look at new phases of expansion. And this is exactly the type of project that you need to address fuel poverty, decarbonisation, etc. This project is, is owned and operated by um, an energy service company that's a subsidiary of Leeds City Council. So Vital Energy were employed as a design, build, operate, maintain partner for, for the project. Northwick Park Hospital, just to provide you a cross um, section of different types of customers. So this is a hospital trust just north of London where we, we've installed a range of low carbon technologies, heat pumps, solar array, battery storage systems in order to deliver a step change in their, in their carbon emissions and take them on that decarbonisation journey. This is a, um, a Swansea Bay Health Board in South Wales. We've done a range of in-building energy conservation projects, including lighting system upgrades, BMS, changing fans, etc. But we've also installed a large uh, ground-mounted solar farm that's connected through a private wire to the health board's uh, electricity network. And there has been times when the, the hospital's total power needs have been satisfied by the, the solar farm. So it's, a, it's made a very significant impact to the, the health board from both an economic and a, a carbon perspective. Now, if, if you combine together the technologies that I've talked to you about today with uh, using renewable heat, renewable generation, energy conservation, and combine those, those are all the types of things that you'll need to do to decarbonise whatever building or estate that, that you have responsibility for. So that's me. I hope that's uh, of interest and look forward to some questions. So thank you all. <clears throat> thank you, Nick.